Right foot out in front, guys. You good? Set. Regular receiver start, right? We'll start left foot out in front. It's chin down, thumb to the nose out in the front here. On go, we're taking it all the way through the yellow coat. Cool? We're gonna run a few of these. Listen, my main focus right off the rip, 100% intensity, keep the arm drive through. All right, let's get it. So with the chain sprints, one of the main reasons we do these is the beginning of a new sprint cycle, right? So what we're trying to do is essentially backload some of the volume, and we're actually on purpose trying to decrease the velocity, which does two things. Number one, it builds the capacity of the athlete to do further sprint work, more intensive, faster sprint work later. But number two, it protects the athlete in the early stages from hamstring pulls, from tweaks, and different things like that. So this allows us to build up the rigidity, the robustness of the athlete, number one, and number two, prepare them for future work. Let's get it. Yeah, no. Push. Whoa. Yeah. Good job. Yo, way better for the first six, but then it got. It's almost like you're rushing it. Don't rush it. Be okay with that. Enough. Better. Better. Getting there. He's getting there. Get that ear stack, mate. That's it. All right, guys, so be our push-up start five. Now listen, the way this is gonna work, we'll get down, push-up position, right? It's chin down. I wanna make sure I'm digging the balls of my feet into the ground on my back side here. On go, it'll be pop. Up as fast as I can. Orange cone to orange cone here through the five. 100% intensity right off the rim, okay? Let's get it rocking, guys, here we go. Up fast, punch out. So the uh, lower starting position forces them in a good acceleration angle. And again, early on in early stages of a sprint cycle, we want to protect them in terms of distances, right? Every yard we go, the top max velocity that an athlete can reach raises, obviously, right? The longer you give them to go, the more speed they can build up. We're working here short range of motion, focused particularly on acceleration, posture, and technique, so I can protect the athlete, build for a more robust athlete later on down the road, and then start to extend those distances over time. Yeah! I don't want to see you out of the block, rip straight up, throw your chin back, no good. I want to see you come up and keep the chin packed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Better. Way better. Best one, Ron. There we go. Getting better. Need a little bit more lift on that front side. So listen, here's how it's gonna go. So first things first, we're gonna do what we call a step back hide and jump. So the way this works, I load up, right? Quarter hinge, quarter squat. I'm gonna load, lead leg behind, post leg. I jump up and out, put it down, I'm back out again. Okay, so you see I'm going slow on purpose. I want you to rapidly put that foot down, stick it into the ground, and then go. Does that make sense? Second piece to this. I'll tell you what weights to use in just a second. Thank you, sir. We're gonna come over, we're gonna do a bent over Y, or a bent over trap race. So, I corkscrew the feet. I'll hinge back. Once I'm in this good hinge position, guys, one hand on my ribs. I take my throwing arm. I lift up to Y. I control back down. Boom. Boom. And we'll get eight reps here. Throwing arm on. Focus back. Focus back. Focus back. Focus back. Chest up, right there. So now we got it. Chin down and touch. There you go. Yes, sir. That's much better. You're making me nervous, bro. I won't lie to you. Good. Ty, reach back a little bit more with your hip. Perfect. Good. Stay there. Lift up. Wide. Pause. Back down. Very good. Good. Now give me a little bit more lift up here. Lift, 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 lift. There. Pause. Back down. Yes, sir. That's what I need. Now bring it a little bit lower on the way back down. There. Good. Up. Wide. Yes, sir. Pull back down. Good. Put it down, back. Good. Lift. Get up in here. Yeah, put it down. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Much better.
We'll get up underneath the bar. Chest up nice and high. I'll stand straight up, boom, one side do. Two baby steps out. I want you to use the upright, the rack itself, to help you get into position. My back foot goes up on the stand. I find the bar again. I'm gonna sink straight down. Boom, I drive back up. Straight down. Boom, I drive back up. Listen guys, here's how it's gonna go. We're gonna hit two sets. It'll be eight each leg on these. In between, we're gonna go single leg RDL with a single kettlebell. We're gonna do it a little bit differently than we always do. Normally, we do what we call contralateral. So, whichever hand has the bell, that's the leg that goes back. Today, we're gonna do what we call ipsilateral. So, the leg that has the bell is the leg that stays down on the ground. So, watch me here. I grab my kettlebell. I'm gonna hold onto the rack with my off hand. I reach back with that leg. Boom, I snap through a squeeze. Watch me again. I reach back. Boom, I snap through a squeeze. Okay, we're gonna get eight each leg here. Good. I want that hip swing open, so I want this point right in the ground. Yeah, still swing it open, see that? That's the best wrap now. Quarter ten each leg. Yep. Snap. Straight down, straight down. Good. Keep calm. You could freeze, move your trunk just further out the front. Find your balance. Straight down, straight up. Good. Get off the side a little bit, straight down. Easy eight, uh, yeah. General single leg strength. Um, it's no particular day. I just want to every week include something unilateral for a single leg strength pattern. Pretty important for overall muscular development, overall for uh, really good strength carryover onto the field, right? We know like strength work is more general in nature than say our sprint work or our power development, but it's still important to make sure that the unit itself ap uh, appears to be as robust as possible. And that's an important concept on two levels. Number one, when we do strength training, we're really just doing strength training so that we're robust enough, injury resilient enough to uh, compete at a high level in our sport, number one, and number two, do more intensive, specific means of training. So really, our strength training, we strength train enough that we're robust, we're bulletproof on the field, and that we can do more intense, more specific training and stay bulletproof as well. So that's really why we're doing single leg stuff. Bar is down, I'll show you the last two things. Dumbbells in my right hand, I'm lunging away from the dumbbell, right? So I'll go step out to the left, boom. I sit back into the hip, I pop back up, back. Does that make sense? We did three sets, we'll go 80 each leg down. We'll go hip flexor slide. Now listen, the hip flexor slide works like this. Toe goes down into the slider, abs and butt squeeze tight. I drive knee up to my chest, I control back down. Boom, boom, okay. We'll get 80 each side on the slide. Butt squeeze tight, we're all the way down, boom, all the way back up, back. Three sets, we're gonna go eight a clip here. Little bit of a squat stance, palm down. I row in, palm. Three, two, one, I'm back out, back in. Palm starts down, palm finishes, palm in, exactly. Every second, that three count pause, it's eight each. So eight push ups, eight each here, three total sets. Cool? X, you're up first here. Abs and butt squeeze tight, all the way down, all the way down. Yes. Boom, squeeze back here. Yeah. Good shot. It matters. Don't let, the, don't let this shoulder roll forward. So I want you to stay. Look, look at me. When you roll in, I want you to think big chest, big chest. Like you're trying to take your chest towards the rest. Cool. Best rep by a lot. Yep. Boom, good. 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 Yeah, so the way I choose the exercises for each individual guy are based on a few things. Number one, their initial assessment with me, right? How do they present? What are some of their strengths, some of their weaknesses, and what are some of the tissues and or patterns that we need to target to take them to the next level? That's number one. 
Number two, how they progress, right? What level of the progression are they in? Are they someone who's making a ton of progress extremely quickly and we need to hit them with more advanced means very soon? Or are they someone who maybe isn't progressing as fast, which is totally fine. It doesn't have anything to do with them as a person or how much I like them or dislike them or anything like that. It's simply, you know, how are you progressing? And the, the faster you progress, the further along I can take those means in terms of how advanced are they, how, uh, how specific are they, and how intense are they really. So that's how I'm choosing the exercises based on initial assessment and then how someone progresses from their initial assessment, their initial uh, orientation to where they're going. I hope you guys liked today. Listen, if you liked the video, click subscribe up here and stick around. We'll have plenty more videos coming your way.